welcome back everybody uh, this tutorial video is on one of my paintings called the Emperor protects prominently featuring a sister of battle uh, which is I guess one of the soldiers from the order or chamber militant of the uh, ministrorum and ecclesiarchy in the uh, Warhammer 40k lore so I'm just doing a rough sketch here, normal layers, 80% opacity brush, uh, hard round brush, really nothing too fancy. Um, as you noticed, I've sort of changed my style a bit so that now I focus mostly on color from the start rather than working in black and white. And uh, I'm not really doing uh, that, many, that much line art, it's mostly just tones and shapes which I like I, I think it's faster actually I know it's faster but uh, I don't like having to go back and retouch up everything so when I normally transition my paintings from black and white to color it takes forever but uh, this way it's much faster it takes about a third of the time alright so the client specifically requested that uh, the sister battle be kneeling in prayer before battle so uh, I got this sort of very humble kneeling pose and some reference shots of women's faces and profile and stuff. And uh, he had a very specific color scheme he wanted, which is great. I love when clients have more details about what they want. Uh, it makes it easier for me to deliver. And uh, lets me know that I'm going to be delivering something with that you know, will meet their expectations if not exceed them. So uh, I always love when clients have you know this giant list. They say, all right, I want this and this and this and this and this and not this and this and this and this and specifically not this. And I want the list to look like this. And it's, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, I'm still using normal layers here. I'm using a 33% opacity brush. And you can see I'm using the eyedropper mostly, eyedropper and just normal brush, normal layer, 100% round, 100% uh, hard brush no funky stuff just like I think smoothing and shape dynamics are on um, I don't have opacity dynamics I like to set my opacity but I do have shape dynamics alrighty so we're just doing some face stuff I uh, I focused more on the figure and the face at first this was supposed to have a minimal bra background so uh, I was really more concerned about getting the character to be correct than the composition. You know, there's no uh, there's no sprawling vistas or you know whatever. It's just it's a one character in one position in a certain location. That's it. Work on this bowl cut. And uh, just doing some shadows now using normal layers, not even using multiply or darken, just just normal layers. And you can see I, I softened up my brush for some of these highlights as I want to be able to show the uh, the geometry and the volumes of the hair. Now I'm using a custom brush. This is my hair brush. It's really just a series of dots. Um, and when you make a stroke, the dots each make their own little like hair strand sort of. So that's my hairbrush. It's also good if you put it on a scatter; it makes really good freckles and skin pores and whatnot. All right, so I'm just doing a little bit more work on the hair here. I wanted it to be less perfectly round and more kind of natural. And uh, now we're doing some work on the shoulder pads, the pauldrons. They've got this nice big fleur de lis on them. Classic Sisters of Battle look. And uh, you notice I don't really care about being messy around the edges right now because it's all going to get polished up. She's got some nice hair silhouetting against the light. It helps frame her face. 
And here I'm just using the eyedropper tool and a normal brush to hem in her outline. And uh, I've got this nice fleur de lis stamp. I think it's like standard Photoshop stuff. So just throw it on there because they have little tattoos on their faces. So. Shortcuts all the time. And uh, still working on the hair, making sure the shape looks right. Altering the haircut, adding more volume here and there. Adding some shadows. Still using normal layers. I'm not really using special layer types right yet. Uh, right now, I'm just sort of doing just normal layers. No blend. No uh, no special effects. Lots of eyedropper and brush tool. And you can see how I'm really working those volumes into the hair. Just adding some shadows and highlights to really push the vo the volumes, give it some form. That's how I paint hair anyway. You, I like to think of it in chunks like kind of like big chunks of hair that sort of overlap and curl and do their own stuff. So I don't do individual strands very often. It, just, it never looks right. Okay, working on the uh, wrist brace, bracers. The nice fist going on. Some bounce light. Normal layers, of course. Now I'm doing some more details on the armor, just using normal layers again, just sampling my previous color schemes. Uh, now I'm using the pen tool and a custom brush, which I made for doing uh, kind of these almost like not corrugated, but like ribbed pipes. So it's really easy to do. You just do a brush, uh, take the pen tool, make a line, and then stroke it with that brush, and you get these nice ridges that are all perfect. And uh, now I'm using a normal layer to add some shadows to these to help define their volumes. And going back to the gauntlet. I love doing uh, armored gauntlets and stuff. They're so fun. I, I don't know what it is. I just like figuring out how they kind of work and fit together and stuff. It's just really fun for me. Alright, so... Uh, hands starting to look good. Adding some highlights. Normal layers again. Fleshing out the wrist a little bit, make it more realistic. And doing some reflections and stuff. Detailing out that little skull. It's in profile. And uh, work on the back rack now, adding some more shadow to the piping and details to the armor. And it's really more to determine the values. I'm not really doing that much embellishment yet. That'll come later. For now, I just need to get the volumes right on all her armor parts, or assets. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to add the secondary armor plate over the wrist. Kind of like over design stuff. And this nice sort of kind of retro y sci fi texture. And uh, here I'm adding her sleeves. Uh, I think I used like some rando princess reference or something for the sleeves. And 
and once again using shadows on normal layers to uh, kind of add that depth. And now it's time for some embellishment. So I'm doing this sort of like filigree stitch and I'm just using a screen layer right now. And do a drop shadow and some bevel and emboss, which are layer effects to give it that sort of 3D pop. It's really fast and dirty, but uh, it looks nice when it's done. Uh, here I'm working on the gauntlet a little bit to make room for the sword. using a quick gradient. And of course, since this is 40k, there's a little bit of a skull emblem on the top. The, uh, the pommel. Okie dokie. So, just doing a little bit of carving work into the hilt. Or the guard. Okay, more shadow work. Adding some soft highlights and some reflections here and there. Still using normal layers and just a hard round brush. A little bit of rim light there. Like a very subtle rim light. There's not really a strong light source so it's just kind of just to help define the edge of her arm. And uh, I said there'd be like uh, three overhead lights so I've been putting these three little dots as reflections on all the armor just to make things look more unified. And uh, adding some circuitry to the power sword, like you do. And now we're finally working on the corset a bit more. So, Sisters of Battle wear very uh, stylized armor. It's um. I mean, it's kind of functional. It's power armor, but it's you know, it's it's got like they have like really tight corsets they wear and uh, like skin tight, form fitting legs and stuff. So they're kind of sexy, sexed up characters. Not really though. Like you know, they're not showing a lot of skin and they're not uh, overtly you know just exposing themselves. But they've got some femininity, which is nice to see. Um. And I, I like working with Sisters of Battle because, uh, you know, it gives me a chance to add beauty to a pretty kind of dark, grim uh, universe. And it's not, it's, you know, it, it's that sort of uh, tragic beauty almost, which is the best type, in my opinion. Kind of like all these lives wasted and these people who are could have been doing other stuff now are thrown into the uh, the crucible of war and uh, you can see that she's kind of got her guts all squished in from the corset which is cool okay just uh, adjusting her legs a little bit since I've been scaling and descaling scaling up and scaling down everything else I need to adjust some stuff So I'm adding some uh, knee guards. They're going to be these sort of large uh, armored shin pads and knee pads, which is fun. Very 40k. And 
and now I'm working on the volumes of the leg, and I'm doing that by adding shadows and highlights. She's got these boots, which are tough to tuck in there. So a little bit of a harsh highlight on the edge to help define the shape. Now I had to make some concessions in the armor design um, on the butt because I couldn't find any good reference for how the armor connected uh, around her hips. Now in Space Marines, it's really easy to find reference. You can just pick up the model and look. But the Sisters of Battle models, they have like uh, these sort of like loincloth-y uh, outfits on over their armor. And it obscures that part. So I looked up some old um, 40k concept art, and uh, I think it's from John Blanche. I think that's his name. But uh, yeah, he just sort of he kind of just goes with the flow. He doesn't really <laughs> he doesn't really design stuff. Um, he just sort of looks for the forms more. So her armor looks kind of like leather or uh, like a, what's it called, like synthetic, uh, kind of spandexy, but that's not the word I'm looking for. I can't remember the top of my head. Like a latex suit or something, I don't know. But uh, that, that works, it's fine with me. Okay, so here's the uh, the tabard or the loincloth type deal hanging down and uh, wrinkling on the floor. Actually, I think the reference I used for this was I had a tissue on my desk that was wrinkled up. Um, so I just looked at it. <laughs> and that's what I used for reference on the wrinkled up uh, cloth. Works for me. Okay, doing some more uh, highlights and stuff. Now I'm working on the knee pads. The knee pads were kind of fun. Um, they're kind of complex shapes, which I like doing. And uh, they have this like almost beaten copper or gold foil appearance to them, which is what I was kind of going for. Okay, now I'm doing some layer effects. That's how I make the uh, some 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 things on the armor are really easy to do if you just use layer effects. So for those little studs in the course, I just use like a drop shadow, an outer glow, and a bevel and emboss effect. And it kind of just does the work for me. Same with this leg kind of steel garter. It's got an outer glow and a gradient uh, overlay. The outer glows I tend to use are actually negative, so I'll rather than have it be a screen or lighten outer glow, I'll use a darken or a normal or a multiply, and it adds like a localized shadow around that stuff, kind of just a little uh, little ambient occlusion around the object. Okay, now I'm doing some texturing, and I'm not importing a texture. All I'm doing is I'm just using a normal layer, sampling with the eyedropper, and then making these kind of like scuffs and scratches. All right making some rivets using layer effects to do it very quickly. As you can see I'm just messing with the different settings right now. Now I'm expanding the canvas. 
adding a little bit of uh, bounce light and reflection because those things are hard to program in using layer effects. And uh, when you're doing 40k art, I found that adding more skulls never hurts. So I thought it'd be kind of cool if the knee pads had, uh, or the knee armor plates had uh, skull faces kind of layering out of them. And this one's in profile. Gotta love doing skulls. Here I'm resizing the sword to make it a little bit more broad. Um, it's almost more spade-like. And adding some notches using normal layer. And now for a filigreed band down the center. Just use the gradient, gradient overlay, which is essentially just a, uh, you know, you're essentially replacing whatever information is there with a, an overlay. Then I added a uh, drop shadow give it some depth, make another layer over it, and uh, shade it in a little bit to make it look 3D, make it pop. Just a little bit of normal work to refine this Aquila on her uh, guard. And now for the filigree. Filigree is really easy. I just use these squiggles and curling shapes, and occasionally I'll throw like a skeleton in or something. Um, a little floor to leave there, more squiggles and shapes. I use these sort of traditional floral patterns. And then all I do is uh, either leave it like that, or I'll do like a drop shadow, bevel and emboss, drop the opacity down to like 50% or whatever, and now I've got this nice textured surface. Easy peasy. Okay, so doing some shading here, adding just a little inquisitorial eye on her garter belt, so it just has a little bit more detail. And then adding these, uh, I guess they're called, I guess they'd be like channels or something, but these, uh, yeah, we'll call them channels around, these channels running through the bands, make them more interesting looking. And uh, I'm re-adding the circuitry to the sword since it got sort of overlapped by that filigreed band. Now I'm redefining the shapes of the shoe to give it some volume, as you can see. And eventually I'm going to have to put another shoe in because she's only got one right now. But uh, yeah, metal can be fun to do if you if you sort of practice enough and you get used to thinking about painting metal and thinking about how it reflects light it can be really fun it's almost like a little thought exercise like a puzzle putting some uh, tracks on the boots and now I'm adding the rear foot just using a normal layer sampling some colors and whatnot using the eyedropper tool And time for some specular highlights here. Just some really intense hounds. And there's those three lights again, but since they're uh, they're not on a flat surface, they're sort of stretched out. And uh, now I'm using a layer mask to add shadows. Uh, so what I do is I made a darkened layer. I grabbed the darkest shadow I could. I filled the entire canvas. I then created a layer mask, inverted the layer mask, and now I'm painting with white to add shadows where I want. And now I'm doing a normal layer over the top to clean things up. Okay, doing some more volume work on the backpack. So this is a battle essentially where mini Space Marine backpacks.
since they're not superhumans, they're not transhuman or posthuman, they're just normal people wearing power armor. And adding some scuffs and scrapes to the armor, using normal air. Uh, some little volume to the corsets, kind of padded texture. Here I'm adding another pipe. I'm not using the tool, I'm just sort of hinting with highlights. I'm not going to kind of really go into detail on it. The pipe, that is, not my process. A little port there. Now I'm adding, there's a, a blue lining to these, so I wanted to add that. And I'm using a color layer just to sort of universally add that blue. Now I'm adding uh, a beaded necklace, kind of like a, ro uh, a rosary. And I'm using just uh, the round brush, and I changed the distance between the strokes to get those uh, beady effects. And then I'm using bevels and bosses and uh, drop shadows and stuff to make them circular. So that was a really dirty, cheaty way to do it. Um, I'm going back in with a normal layer to add some reflections and uh, some bounce light. And uh, that's one fast way to make a beaded necklace. Alright, so this is how I do purity seals. So purity seals are pretty easy once you know how to do them. Uh, they're paper, so they're very thin, and that can be difficult to do uh, normally. So what I do is I sort of paint my purity seals with a normal layer, just like 100% opacity brush or 99% opacity brush, whatever. And then I will lock the pixels which you can see at the top of the layer menu underneath normal, there's this little icon that says lock, and next to it there's a sort of uh, checkered square. If you click that, that means that when you paint on it, you're only going to be painting the pixels that are already there. You cannot add more or remove stuff. Uh, I use that because it's really nice for adding volumes. Uh, so what I'll do is like I'll paint them in a neutral tone, and then I'll lock the layer and start painting in the highlights or the shadows. And I don't have to worry about spilling over or messing up my lines or whatever. And I'll do a series of layers of these, and then underneath I'll do shadows, which are just normal layers with dark color, and uh, then I do the seals. The seals are wax seals. They're really easy to do as well. They're just this red blotch on a normal layer. And then on top, I just sort of start working with the volumes. Uh, a stamp is essentially like a glob of wax that has something pressed into it, so it'll have a recess inside which will be usually have a shadowed overhang and then a strong highlight because it's waxy so it has a very high re reflectivity and then you'll have like a bounce on under the bottom side and another kind of pinprick highlight at the bottom rim of the wax seal and then the inside you just sort of have to highlight however it looks in this case you can see there's a skull the script is a normal layer it's just a kind of dark brownie color just little lines drawn on it's not really that hard to do it's, it can be time consuming, but it's not intensely difficult. Uh, I remember the client wanted a helmet, or at least I wanted to add a helmet, I don't remember exactly. Uh, so I got some reference for a Sisters of Battle helmet, and I just started painting it using the eyedropper tool, grabbing colors from the existing painting to make sure that it matched. So I'm just blocking in some tones right now, some colors. We've got this nice visor that has a sagittal uh, plate. And I'm working on the volumes now to help define it. So Sisters of Battle helmets look different from normal Space Rain helmets. If Space Rains are monks, Sisters of Battle are nuns is a good way to think about it. Alright, so working on the volumes, adding some shadows and stuff. Still using normal layers, still using the hard round brush. Varying opacities. Alright, scuffing it up, adding some dents and chips. Some little rivets there, just using normal layer. It's not worth making layer effects for something that little. Here I'm refining the outline a little bit. Just doing some touch-ups. And uh, I just copied in place and then pasted and uh, shrunk the helmet down a little bit. And now I'm adding the breathe breather portion. Kind of this little gasket on the front of the helmet where they, I imagine they breathe out of. 
and uh, I actually accidentally forgot to record some of that, but all I did was I pretty much just shaded on a fleur de lis and added the helmet eyes, and that's it. And the way I did the, the fleur de lis is just like any of the other armor on here, it's just defining the volumes using highlights and shadow. Time for the other sleeve, adding the second arm in. She's got, like sort of kneeling in prayer, and she's got one hand on a sword and the other hand on her bolt pistol. And I'm not really using a lot of reference. I think I had a, a picture of a guy holding a pistol for reference. And of course, he wasn't wearing a gauntlet or carrying a bolt pistol. He had like, you know, some Sig Sauer pistol or whatever, some semi auto. Looked like a 9mm or something. Alright, so we have some bolt pistols for reference, of course. Gotta make sure it looks right. Both pistols have this sort of armored casing on the top, which is colored usually, so that's what's being painted on right now. And there's the trigger guard and the trigger. There are the barrels, and here's the mag. Okay, and she is maintaining trigger safety, keeping her finger off the trigger until she's ready to use it. Here I'm just embellishing the gun, adding details and volumes, some screws and highlights and stuff. It's got a nice wood handle. Now I'm just adding some highlights and volume to the hand. And breaking it down into pieces. Think of each finger as a cylinder almost, like a little bit of a squashed cylinder that become incrementally smaller. So you've got your first digit, which is about, uh, well, let's actually do it in reverse order. So you're, if you look at your first digit on your finger where your fingernail is, it's about two thirds the size of the next digit. And then that digit is two thirds the size of the, of the last digit. So that's how I draw my fingers. They get little smaller pieces as you go out. Okay, so I'm still just using normal layers. I haven't used anything special here. Eyedropper and normal brush. Here's the uh, mag release. Here I'm adding some uh, highlights and shadows to the metal to make it stick off the rest of the surface. Got a nice wood grip, adding some uh, indents for the indentations for the fingers, since usually grips are molded to fit a hand. Here I'm adding a, a little trim with a drop shadow, very quick. And now I'm adding these sort of scuffs and scratch marks to make the metal look more textured. And I'm not importing a texture, I don't need that, I can just do it with the brush, normal brush, normal, or a uh, hard round brush, normal layer. And then I added some filigree using a normal layer. And I believe I added a drop shadow. But in this case, I invert the angle of the drop shadow. And I use a lighten versus multiply. So I get this sort of uh, highlight along my geometry. Time to do some uh, trim on the edges of the sleeve here to mimic the other sleeve the one we have already painted. And a little bit of work on the interior of her arm guard. And uh, work on the shadows and the hair, kind of forcing the contrast, making the face more visible. Some errant hairs. and work on the shadows to make sure the, the hand looks correct. What I'm doing now is I'm just adding a little bit of aerial perspective between each object to differentiate them in space. Not a lot, but just a little bit. So it's almost like a little passive glow. Uh, now I'm adding a halo using a mask 
and then I have to paint out the stuff that I don't want to be haloed and keep what I do want to be haloed. And this is more of a graphical interpretation of a halo. You know, it's if it was an actual halo, like you know, it, it it's not like the little kind of dinky angel halos that float over their heads in little rings. It's sort of like that classical icon type halo from you know that you see around the head of Jesus or Mary if you look at Christian art. And uh, more masks here to make an inner ring of the halo. And uh, just using a little bit of a Gaussian blur to soften it up. And at one point I had this nice little like kind of sparkle to it. We'll highlight hot spot. And I tried doing an inner shadow, but it looked too much like a bubble around her head, so looked like she was an astronaut. <laughs> Next up, she's done. Time to do the altar. She's kneeling before. Uh, now, the altar went through several iterations in size and shape, as you can see. Uh, I wasn't quite sure whether I wanted it to be a small altar in front of her, a massive altar that's looming over her. You know, uh, I didn't really know where I wanted to take it, so I just sort of started messing around. Now, unfortunately, I didn't establish my perspective lines before I did this, so my altar is not... It's not lined up with the tiles in the final in the final painting. It's not a huge deal because it doesn't have to necessarily be lined up with them. Objects are only going to be perspective if they're following the same line. So this can be tilted in space and still be correct. It just looks a little bit weird. And uh, you'll see what I'm talking about when we get there. But uh, I'm just using like the lasso tool to duplicate shapes and make sure things are symmetrical. Okay, adding some shadow to help define the uh, volume. Some little highlights here and there. Oh, doing some reflections that I forgot about. There's a localized shadow from the overhead light source. And now I'm making some recesses in it. So I'm using a couple layer effects. I think it's an inner shadow or something. Uh, I know that came out of nowhere. I didn't hit the record right. So that's that filigree was done the same way as the filigree on the sword blade. Just painted straight, bevel and emboss, drop shadow. And then I had to go back and highlight it. Now I'm doing a fleur de lis. I created a fleur de lis using the shape tool. And I'm highlighting it and shading it by hand. Because the bevel and emboss and stuff, uh, those effects are great, but they're not that effective. It's just a computer program. It's not, you know, it's not someone sitting there and figuring stuff out. So I like to do some of this stuff by hand. Really give it those volumes. A little bit of a bounce. And there's a localized shadow being cast by the fluid release since it is popping off the surface. And then there's a localized shadow from the rim as it casts onto the fluid delay. Now I'm adding some cracks, just using normal layers, kind of cracks and texture to the surface. Make it more interesting. And time for some filigree. Just sketching with a normal layer, 100% round brush. Got this gold color from using the eyedrop or uh, you know, sampling my other stuff. And since this is going to be in symmetrical format, I just did one side using filigree. I've gotten quite adept at knocking out filigree quickly. Okay. 
Okay, so that's done. Then I duplicate it and flip it, and ta-da, we have a nice filigree symmetrical surface. Here's some bevel and emboss to give it a little bit of uh, volume. And then I have to go back in and highlight by hand just to give it that painterly touch, make it more natural. Alright, so I'm doing some highlights on this filigree here. Duplicate and flip. Okay. Now, I wasn't sure what I wanted to have in these holes. I, originally, I thought maybe it would be a reliquary, so I'd have some bones, but I didn't like that. Then I thought, okay, well, maybe we'll do uh, like these depicted scenes, sort of like these canonical theme uh, scenes. but I didn't like that either, so I ended up going with these flat blue tones. Just to sort of unify her with the altar. And I added just a little bit more filigree to make it look jazzy. Okay, so now I'm adding some notches and dents and scratches to the altar itself. Time for the skull on the altar. It's still a reliquary, but it's only a skull. Maybe the guy's body is inside the altar. I don't know. We'll just say that's the case. Uh, my reference for the skull is a physical anatomical skull that I use. It's in my studio. It just sits here, and uh, I pose it and light it when I work. Still using normal layers, 100% round brush. Looks like in 50 to 90 percent opacity. Skulls are really fun to do. When they come out looking right, I just love it. They look so cool. And there's a lot of really fun details to the skull that you don't really think about, but they're there. So that's why it's good to have reference. Okay, doing some highlights here on the bone. Still doing some highlighting. And uh, I'm just using normal layers. There's those three dots for the overhead light. Time for some shadow to ground it. And some reflective bounce. some scattered crap on the surface there and now we're going to do some candles. This is a reliquary so it's going to have candles and little votive offerings. Candles were pretty simply done, just normal layers um, with a sort of subsurface scattering effect done to them. So they are somewhat light permeable and somewhat reflective. Interesting sort of material to paint. And I made the candles sort of have this bluish tint. So it's like a kind of bluish wax. Give it some contrast against the skull in the background. And uh, candles during the day are hard to see, so I, uh, I sort of tweak them to look more realistic. And originally they were this orange color, but I thought it was too contrasted to the rest of the painting, so I made them a little bit more yellow. And I thought they worked well that way. 
Now I'm just resizing the uh, bolt pistol using the lasso tool and repainting over the stuff I messed up on with a normal layer and a layer mask. So I imported this texture for the background. Not really going to be used that much. Remember, this is a minimal background. The painting is mostly just about the Sister of Battle. I did run through some filters to help unify the uh, unify its appearance with the uh, painting in terms of style, but it, it's not really going to get used that much. It's almost just more to help set the scene than anything else, really. So I went on CG textures, grabbed some more textures for a nice tile floor. Uh, here I duplicated the texture and flipped it so I had a, a larger texture to work with. This is part of working with 3D textures, uh, part of my training. Uh, this was an extremely large file and all I did was I applied it to the image and then I, uh, using a soft light layer, tilted it and distorted it using a transform tool and then painted it in using a mask. And that's it. Uh, then I uh, affected it using the brightness contrast and color balance settings. Here I'm using just a large round brush and here are some textured brushes that I'm using in, on my mask to reveal and hide parts of this white cloud I just painted in. And uh, since this is sort of a vignette, I felt like there needed to be some text or something. So I tried out some uh, different styles, and here I'm adding actually some purple smoke from like incense or something. Here are some balancing uh, brightest contrast layers, vibrance layers. There's my signature. And uh, the fleur de lis I added at the end with the, some text. So that's the painting. Um, I know that it's kind of shocking when I use just normal layers all the time. You don't really get that sort of analytical approach where, well, we're doing a gray and white pass first, and then we're going to colorize, and then we're going to highlight. Like it's not really that, you know, formulaic. So uh, I don't know how. Uh, <laughs> really what to say, but that's just how I do things now, it's much faster. So uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment. If you're interested in commissioning your own painting, please send me an email at artistnicholask.com. We can talk about prices and uh, getting something together for you. Uh, if you'd like to buy a print, please go to my in-print gallery. A, dis uh, a link to it is in the description. You will not be able to buy any prints of my Warhammer themed stuff, as I don't own the intellectual property. Uh, however, I do have some other stuff on there for purchase. Uh, lastly, if you're interested in some of my tutoring services, please go to my website, nicholaskay.com slash clinic, and check out my tutoring, group critique, or private portfolio reviews. Uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you all later.